All right, so <clears throat> we are on week number four, I think it is. Yeah, you should be on week number four. So we're on week number four. Uh, last week we had, uh, what letters did we cover last week? Do you guys remember? I recovered Kaf through Samek last week, right? So this week we're going to go Ayin through Rish. Okay? So those are the five letters that we're going to cover. And then now next week we only have got two letters, right? We'll only have two letters next week, but we're going to start focusing. We'll also focus on some grammatical rules and things like that next week. All right? So we're going to study on, the, on some grammar rules. Uh, we'll be working on, and then I believe the week after that, we're going to be talking about, uh, I think next week we're going to be talking about Shva, the, 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 the Nikud Shva, and then uh, I think the week after that we work on things, we're going to work on things like furtive pataks and things like that. But right now we're not really concerned about that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So our first letter for today is the letter Ayin, okay? Ayin. So Ayin, it's a silent letter just like Aleph, okay? <clears throat> so it's going to take on whatever Nikud or whatever vowel point is attached to it. Now remember last week we talked about which ones? We talked about the I-type vowels last week, okay? The I-type vowels, those are easy because there's only two of them, right? And then we've got, we're going to talk about O-type vowels today, okay? There's even one in there that we, I don't know that we've ever seen it, actually, an O-type vowel. But we're going to cover it just to make sure that, that, we're, that we're aware of it. But anyway, the letter Ayin, okay, it is a silent letter, just like Aleph. But it's there because it forms part of the Shoresh, or the root word. And remember, whenever we're looking at a Hebrew word, we're looking at combinations of how many letters? Normally, it's going to be three, okay? Sometimes you have two-letter roots. Sometimes you have four-letter roots. But about 95% of them are going to be three-letter roots. So that's what we normally look for when we tear down a sentence like we do in some of our classes. For all intents and purposes, during this refresher class, we're not going to worry too much about that. I take that back. Week after next, we will translate a sentence, okay, um, to give us more. And then we'll get back into our normal practice, like what we normally do with our sentences out of the Psalms and then our paleo words, okay? But we'll, like I said, we're working on a refresh right now. So remember, the numerical value of the letter Ayin, even though it's a silent letter, it has a numerical value of 70, okay? Now, it's important to remember, and I say this every week, but there is no separate letter and number system, Okay? Now, numbers have names, yes, but when it comes to special numbers and you're seeing them in a written form, they'll have, they'll have a, a, looks like a set of double quotation marks in there. It's called a Geresh, and we'll get on, but that's usually for like historical dates, special things, Okay. But it has a value of 70. So in our proto-cyanatic, right, that's the oldest form that we know of, the proto, all right, it has this I shape, right? Because remember, it's symbolic of the I. So it has this I shape. <clears throat> then when later on down the road, when they moved toward the what we call the paleo, it just became a simple circle. Okay, still reminiscent of an eyeball, but it just became a, a simple circle. And then the Asher form, right? The form that they brought out of Assyria or out of Babylon with them, right? It went from being this to being this, this shape here. Kind of looks like a Y almost, what we would consider a Y. Okay, but it's important to remember that that is a silent letter, and it's going to take on the sound of the vowel point that we see either under it or over it, okay? And, of course, the word ayin, that's the, the name. So we talked about what form don't we have up here? We don't have the script form up here, right? So I've been 
writing it out for you, right? Here's the script form of the letter Ayin. Just like that. It's like a little loop. Or like a little fish swimming downwards or something. Okay, but that's the script form. And remember, the script form of the Hebrew is what they would write in a personal note to somebody. You know, hey, pick up some eggs at the store. That's what. It, that's the form it's going to be written in. They're not going to block it out or anything like that. You know what I mean? So any, on the Peshat or the top level, the upper level, the text level, we see that the Ayin is symbolic of, like we said before, an eye. Okay? It's symbolic of the eye, the actual orbit itself. And the meanings for that letter, it means to see, to understand, to comprehend. Okay? Um, it can also symbolize something round. Pretty simple. Right? A ball or whatever. Right? It can also symbolize the desires. Right? Because we see things and we say, oh, I, I want that. I'd like to have that. Boy, you see that new car that Matt's got? Man, that thing is fine. I wish I had me one like that. That's, that all comes in through the eye gate, right? And when we see this, certain things, we're like, oh, man. So it, it can talk about the desires. Now, when we talk about these letters, remember, too, we have positive meanings. And since Yahweh is an L of order, what else must we have? We've got to have a negative side, too. Everything's got to be in balance right so on the negative side it talks about blindness okay not only physical but also spiritual as well okay so both physical and spiritual blindness okay can talk about sadness because tears come from where the eye they start in the heart but they come from the eyes right that's the relief valve okay and we talked about desires, right? There's a good desire, and there's a not-so-good desire, yeah? Okay, so we're talking about good desires on the positive side, but we're talking about passions and lusts and things like this that maybe aren't so good for us. That, that you know, like it talks about in the Ten Commandments, that I'm not supposed to covet my neighbor's house or his goods or his manservant or his ox or his whatever. <laughs> his his well, it didn't happen. Back then. His his ox cart. Shall we? Okay, I'm not supposed to. I'm not supposed to to covet those things. But again, it all really shows where the heart is, right? Because remember, out of those desires, other things come. The scriptures tell us that out of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, what happens? The mouth speaks. Okay. It says that Yahweh weighs our actions. Okay? So if that stuff is in us, if that negative is in us, it's going to come out. And it's going to come out in a certain way. Yeah, what's that in the well? going to come out in the bucket. What you got, bro? Does it just change at some point? And he reveals it? Or how does that work? How do I get the negative out? You know? First of all, the biggest thing is, well, everything's practice. This walk every day is a practice, right? Okay? None of us has this thing 100%, and we're doing the best that we can. But that's the thing. He talks about those that diligently seek him. So what does it mean to be diligent? Okay? That means that we're a little more aware. It means that we're looking for things, Right? I remember how I was 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And some of those things, like I said, I'm, I'm just, I'm flesh and blood. I'm just a guy, you know. Sometimes I get upset and I feel something starting to rise up, okay. So right then, I know who I used to be and I know who I am now. So I recognize that for what it is and for what it was catch it okay and that's it brother you got to learn to know you got to know yourself you know what i'm saying you got to know yourself and and that's the thing that's the thing you know every now and again man you know you you're gonna see something pop up 
It happens. Right? But do you castigate yourself? Do you, you know, oh, yeah, you, 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 you ain't no better than you were five years ago. You don't do that. Okay? Well, yeah. You, 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 it, yeah, exactly. Just like Rebbe was talking about last night. Don't take it personally. Okay? Hey, wow. That surprised me. I didn't even realize that that was still in there. Father, I'm sorry. Get that out of me. I didn't even realize. I still had it, and I didn't know. That's possible. That's possible. Okay. Again, brother, you 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 cannot take it personal. Okay, just like what I said last night when I was talking about that boss of mine. He said, "Man, he said every time that these things happen, because I used to do that when we would have these regulating bodies come in, because it's my job to deal with them, with the Fed." And with the, you know, with the, the, the EPA and the USDA and the FDA and all them A's, I, I deal with them every day. And when they want to come in and take a look at your records and your this and your that, and there's a hole because somebody over here didn't do their job, I would take that because it, to me it felt like a failure. And it's my responsibility and it didn't get done. But this boss pulled me off to the side and he said, hey, he said, man, take a deep breath. He said, just, he said, calm down. He said, because every time that they find something, yeah, we hate that they found it, right? But it's not your fault. Don't take it personally. He said, that shows that we have a problem with our system and that now we have a, a possibility or a possible way to, uh, to improve what we had. But we never know that we need improvement until these things pop up. Okay? It, it, and when it, when it becomes revealed, that's when we catch it. So, exactly. Once you know, now you can take care of it. See what I'm saying? So like I said, you know something's there. Just keep praying for the Father to reveal it to you. And when you see it, recognize it for what it is. Cool? Awesome. That's all you can do. That's it. All right. So the letter Ayin is all about introspection. It's about seeing those things that you may not see on the surface. Okay. But that's why I use the word introspection. Right. Because the scriptures tell us that we, we have to look into ourselves. What do we do in the, during the 10 days of awe? That is a time of introspection. The time between what? The day between Yom Turah, right? The day of shouting, and Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. Those 10 days are called the 10 days of all because that's 10 days. It's kind of like a picture of grace and action. The 10 days of awe, A-W-E. All right? That's kind of like, it's, it's kind of like an example of grace. Now, we talk about grace what the church recognizes as grace is basically a get out of jail free card from monopoly right but the way we understand it the scriptures say that grace is a space it's a period of time love you and so that 10 days is a period of time for us to kind of look inside and say hey what do i got that's messed up in here what am i you know, where am I getting off the track? Where where am I off the course? So that we don't go into Yom Kippur still screwing things up and thinking it's all good. You know, that's exactly right. Yom Teruah. T-E-R-U-A-H. Okay? So that's that's why Ayin is an important... Well, I mean, they're all important. Don't get me wrong. But Ayin is good because, like I said, it speaks of introspection. Right, an examination. But normally it's of oneself. Huh? So that is the letter Ayin. Any questions? No, you will not see it as a prefix or a suffix. Okay? I caught it before my lovely wife had a chance to remind me. I caught it myself. Okay, so let's move on to our next word, our next letter. So we have the letter. Peh, peh, or 
Fe. It all depends. Remember, this is one of those letters. What did we call them? What were those six letters that changed their sounds? They're called Beged Kafat letters, right? So your Beged Kafat letters, Pe or Fe is one of those, right? So this letter can have two different sounds, either a P or an F. Without a Dagesh, so without that dot, this sound is going to sound like F. But with Dagesh, it's going to sound like P. Okay? So that's why you have an F and a P up here, because it can sound like both of them, depending on whether it carries a dot inside or not. Okay? Now, at the end of a word, see that form right there? There's your sofit form. Right? You see how it dangles down below the line? That, that's only going to appear at the end of a word. And it's always going to sound like an F at the end of a word. It never sounds like a P at the end of a word, okay? It always sounds like an F. So it has a numerical value of 80. 80. So we have this little oval disc-shaped thing. This was the proto, right? And it kind of looks like a little mouth, right? Like a little cartoon mouth, right? And then, of course, it changed its form. So now, you know, in the paleo, it looks like this. And then, of course, these are your Asher or your Babylonian renditions of it, which used in Siddur's and, and, and prayer books. Um, so anyway, the word pe, even in, even in usage, okay, even in, in usage, the word pe means the mouth, okay? So that's what it's. That's what it's symbolic of. It's symbolic of the mouth. Now, pe is a lot of fun because it can mean a whole lot of different things. We do a lot of things with this mouth, right? There's a whole book in the scriptures that's just about dedicated to what comes out of this thing right here. Right? Book of James talks all about that. What Ruby calls the pink tornado, right? You got that thing, it tear up a bunch of stuff. All right? But on the Peshat or on the top level, it's a mouth. It's the ability to speak, to eat. Talks about words because words come out of this mouth, right? Words are first formed in your heart, right? And then they come out of your mouth. So it can mean all of these things. To speak, it can mean words, it can mean to create. Because how were things, how was the world made? How was everything made? Right? The scriptures tell us that everything except for Adam was spoken into existence. Adam was created with the hands, right? Made from the dust of the earth. Well, made. I'm going to put made. Because there's a difference between making something and creating something. When something is created, it comes from nothing. When something is made, it's made from something. Adam was made from the dirt, right? So he was made. But the world and the water and all that, that was created. The Father spoke it into existence. Well, Yahushua spoke it into existence. Okay? That's another thing that we need to remember. When it comes to creation, right? The Father was the architect. He drew up the plan, said, Hey, I got this great idea. Right? So then when you when you when you go on a job site, if you're doing construction or carpentry or whatever, the architect he gives you these plans, and you're the subcontractor. You're the contractor, subcontractor, whatever. And so who actually, who's really doing the work? The contractor, the subcontractor, right? So look at it that way. The father is the architect. He drew up the plans, handed them to his son, and said, son, I want you to make this. And the scriptures tells us, that without, you know, that without him was not anything made that was made. And he spoke that into existence. So the things that we remember, we are created how? In his image. So by the same token, the things that come out of our mouths carry a lot of power and a lot of weight. And you got to be really careful. Especially when it comes to speaking to your children. 
the things that you say to them, even the names that you give them are incredibly important because they will carry characteristics from the things that you put on them. So when we speak, right, we need to be mindful of the things that we say. A lot of times we get upset. And sometimes when you get mad, a lot of things come out of your mouth that, <laughs> that ain't good. But that goes back to what you were talking about, brother, being able to catch that, that kind of stuff. Okay? So, again, to speak, words themselves, to create, right? To eat, just like what we just did. I think we did pretty good. I, I, I enjoyed that tremendously. <clears throat> All right, but remember, we got a negative side here, right? We also got negative side to this. So what do we have? What's the opposite of being able to eat? Going hungry, right? Being hungry, starving, not having enough, lacking, okay? So the scriptures also tell us that how good are right words, right? I believe it is it in the book of Job where it says that uh, that uh, a good word spoken in due season. Okay? There are ways that we are to deal with each other in our speech. On the negative side, we have arguments and ugliness. Ugly words coming out, I mean. Okay? And then we have also just silence. Silence sometimes can be a good thing, except for when you need help. And when you don't speak to somebody, right, then you're on the negative side of this letter. Because how does a child learn something? They ask questions, right? And when we don't understand, and when we're hurting, and when we're lost and we're uh can't see a way out when we don't voice that a lot of times it's because we don't want to bother anybody but when we don't voice that we'll never get our uh, our question answered and we'll never make it to the end of that tunnel and we'll stay stuck in that darkness you know and i'll be honest with you the father does not mind you asking him questions he doesn't you know, <clears throat> mom and dad are the same way. What have I told y'all? <clears throat> and I probably say it every week. I probably tell y'all the same. My phone rings 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you need me just to talk or just to bounce an idea off of or just to get something out because it's keeping you awake, call me. I'm not going to hit the decline. I'm here for you. Just like mom, just like Kim, just like Rebbe. We're here for y'all. If you need us, you call us. And that's how we help. I might not can do anything, but I can listen. And sometimes that's all you need. Sometimes that's all a person needs is someone just to talk to. I had a friend one time that was going through some stuff. They live in on the West Coast. They called me, and I stayed on the phone with them from 1.30 in the morning, our time, until it was time for me to go to work at around 6.30. And all I did was just listen, because that's what they needed. And that's what I'm telling y'all. You need something from the Father, you ask Him. Church told us, you know, oh, well, He knows your heart. Yeah, He knows your heart. But you got to get that stuff out, right? Father knows everything there is to know, in theory. But sometimes you got to get them words out into the atmosphere. You know what I mean? You can't get no help if you don't ask. Okay? So remember, the mouth is incredibly powerful. Who's our own worst enemy? Right? Who does who talks more trash about you than anybody else in the world? Yourself. I know cuz I do it too. 
So the question is, I wonder how many, well, my observation, how much do we put on ourselves that we live with every day? Because we don't, we don't think about it. We throw it out there. Oh, you ain't no good. You worthless. That's me talking to me. You're a failure. Does that make me want to grow? Does it make me want to keep pushing on? No, that makes me want to sit down and just be like, man, I can't believe this. And ain't nobody said a word about anything but me. So, like I said, you got to remember that if we are troubled or if we have a need, our Father expects us to talk to him. He said he'd give you everything. He, he owns a cattle of a thousand hills. You think your little bit that you need is something to him? Ain't nothing. Make it happen like that. That's the letter pay. We do not have prefixes or suffixes with the letter pay. Oh, did I not get? I did not. Thank you for reminding. What did I do with my pen? I get excited. Where did I put my pen? I found it. Okay, so we have two different forms here. So the fe or the f form looks like a little spiral shape. Okay. Now the so feet form is a little different. Starts down here. I actually come around about like that. That's your so feet form. Okay? So those only appear at the end of words. Five different letters that only appear at the end of words. We call the so feet letters. No, the thing is, <clears throat> they know the context. Okay? We're not native speakers. Those letters are put there, or those little dots are put there for us, right? Um, so if we were native speakers, it's just like in the paleo. It's just like in the paleo, you know? When we see a paleo, pay or fe, which one is it? We don't know. It's based on the context of the word, right? It's got. Oh, well, kind of goes off what sister now. Even if like, if if you were going to use the the, the this form to to um, talk to someone who's very new to Hebrew, you still wouldn't use any dots. You wouldn't use this form, sis. Oh, you wouldn't use this. No, form. because this is the most difficult form. The script is the right. most difficult and the least used form. Right. Okay, so you wouldn't use it again. This is for personal notes. You know, if you're telling your kids, hey, do the dishes, and you left them a post-it on the refrigerator, you would use it in that shape or in that form. <clears throat> it's only ever used for handwritten things. Yeah, it's, it's not something that you're, you know what I mean? If it was in a newspaper, it's going to be in a block form. If it's in a siddur or a prayer book, it's going to be in the Asher script. You know? So, like I said, you're not going to, you're not going to have, uh, you wouldn't do that with somebody who's, you wouldn't use that form with somebody who's just learning. A lot of us have been doing this for a long, long time. Okay? So that is the letter pay or pay. All right. So let's move on. Every, anybody got any questions? We ready to move on to the next letter? All right, so our next letter here, another one of these crazy-looking guys, right? <clears throat> so we have the letter Sade. Sade. So it's a T-S sound, like you hear in the word nuts. So it's a tss, tss, okay? T-S has a numerical value of 90. Now, in the proto form, 
Looks like a little snake or something, doesn't it? Kind of creeping along. <laughs> it does kind of look like a little dude doing some, draw him a couple little arms up here. He's just give up. He's just like, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> He's, he did one. That's all. He, look, he ain't got no muscle tone. He did one. And he's, look how big his head is. He, I was like, Mom. He's trying to. <laughs> so then we got this proto form, right? Or the paleo form here. So it's like a stick with a little lightning bolt coming off of the end of it. Okay? So again, we have two forms. We have a standard form, which is this kind of backwards Y looking one. And then we've got this guy with this with this dangling down. What do we go? What do we call this? What kind of letter is that? So feet, right? Because it's hanging down below the line. It's at, it's at the end of a word. End of a word, okay? You could use it if you had 14 words in that sentence that ended with Sadi. You'd still have that letter at the end of every one of them words, okay? <clears throat> it would be a very odd sentence. That would be very difficult. Okay, so it has a TS sound. Script form. All right, so the first one, the, the, the in the sentence form, looks like this. It's like the number three. Okay? So you remember that we had that crazy looking one for the for the the face so feet, right? Okay, we had that crazy form. So now the only difference between face so feet and side is so feet is this little top piece here. Side is so feet, it's turned up. They so feet, it's turned down. That's the only difference between the two. So even in the script form, they got letters that look alike. Okay? The, the script form is really hard. I mean, it's tough. I don't know, sis. You, you have to ask them. I have no idea. So anyway, like I said, that's the script form of it. So on the top level, <coughs> on the Peshat, right, the top level, it's supposed to symbolize a fish hook, okay, a fish hook. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. Because on the top, what is a fish hook to a fish? It hurts them, right? It's an instrument of pain. It's a snare. It's a trap. And that's on the positive side. Okay? Also, encapsulated in this letter is the concept of conflict and struggle. Right? Take a look at Jacob and Esau. What'd you have with Jacob and Esau? They were fighting in there, weren't they? She said, if it's like this, why is it thus? Why is this going on? <clears throat> right? They were fighting with each other. But Kiddushim, I'm going to tell you that every day with us is a struggle. Every day is a conflict. It ain't like they said, it's going to be peaches and cream and every day is going to be Sunday and it's a bed of roses. It don't work that way. Bed of roses got thorns in it, right? Okay? And that's what I'm telling you. The scriptures tell us that if you would seek to be a righteous person, I don't want to use the word that it says in the King James, but if you would seek to live righteously, what can you prepare for? Persecution. Okay? And it seems the closer you try to walk in this thing, the more you grief you catch from everybody. Okay? You're going to catch a whole bunch of grief. But you know what? Scriptures also tell us that iron sharpens iron. The more grief you get, the sharper your weapon can become. <clears throat> And nobody walks into a battle 
like what Dawid said, right? Saul tried to give him his armor and his sword and all. <clears throat> he said, I can't use these. I've not tried these. I've not tested them. They made for me. Well, guess what? Your battle is not made for anybody else. Your battle is for you. And it's kind of like what you said earlier today, Sister Shelby. And I, I want to tell you, I'm proud of you. And I respect you so much for being so new and so young in this. But the statement that you made in that text message that you sent me earlier, that spoke volumes to me. My sister, I wrote her this, uh, was it yesterday or so? Well, this morning, she sends me a message that said, hey, and we all know Sister Shelby gets bad migraines. She said, my head is killing me. It's pounding, I think is what you said, right? She said, I think I'm just going to catch it on Zoom today. I said, all right, sis, we'll be praying for you, no problem. We get here, got the room up and everything else. I get a text message that says, you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and come. She says, and this is what got me. I feel like I'm being, I hope you don't mind me telling this. She said, I feel like I'm being tested. And I don't want to fail the test. I said, sis, I'm on my way. Hallelujah. That touches me. Because that shows you that, yeah, we're going to have adversity. And we're going to have setbacks. Right? But we got to pull up them bootstraps, right? Got to keep walking. He who endures to the end shall be said. Not he who makes it 99.99% of the way. But what have we always said? It don't matter if you're walking, if you're running, walking, crawling when you get to the, just make it across the finish line. Right? So that's what I'm saying. Your struggle is not my struggle. And my struggle is not yours. But we all got one. And we all have to walk out. Scriptures say walk out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. All right? I can't walk it out for you. Wish I could, but I can't. It's the same as I, I wish you could walk out mine, but you can't. I can't do it, brother. I can't do it. I would if I could, but I can't, so I won't. All right? But it also, it also, it also speaks about being fixed. And what I mean is, Scripture says us to be what, steadfast and unmovable, right? So it means also to be fixed in place. A tree planted by rivers of water, all right. What that old song say? I will not be moved. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. So the tzadi sounds like a scary letter, even on the on the on the positive side. Positive, big air quotes here, on the positive side. But that's the thing. Part of that is learning to become a warrior. You don't become a warrior without getting in a few fights. Got to have that training, right? What if a person enlisted in the military and they threw them right out on the front line, been there two days, Boop, there you go. They're going to die. <laughs> you don't want that, OJT, brother, I tell you. All right? But that's the thing. It, 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 even though, like I said, even though it, 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 it talks about a struggle, it also talks about being fixed in place. Okay? It talks about being steadfast. Now, on the negative side, it talks about pain and misery. So, because we understand the scriptures a little differently, what do we call pain, misery, and woe? What are those things? What does that comprise? Evil. That's what the scriptures say, right? The word evil, it means pain, misery, woe. That's, that's a big difference from what the Pentecostal church taught me. When I was growing up, okay? So, it talks about that, and it talks about snares, pitfalls, traps. Because we know that the, that the enemy, Hasatan, right? The accuser of the brethren, that old, that old snake and that old devil and all of whatever you want to call him. 
is that he sets snares, traps. We got to have our ayin, we got to have our eyes open so that we see them for what they are and we don't fall off into them. We don't stumble into those things. But like I said, when we look at that, you, you can look at this Saudi in one of two ways. So you're the fisherman, and you're standing out there on the bank, and you, you sling that line out there. And you got your bait out there, and you reeling it. And that fish jumps up, boom, takes off running with it. Set that hook, and y'all are, y'all are in a battle now, right? Y'all are in a battle now. And a lot of this is based on how you see it. Because for that fish, if he loses that battle, what is it for him? It's death for that fish, but it's life for the fisherman. So when you're the one who's in the struggle, you're the one who's in the conflict, you're, you're going to look a little different, you know what I mean? Sometimes we need to take a little step to the side and look at it from a different angle. Oh, okay, I see. He ain't trying to kill me after all. What did it say over there in the scriptures? Y'all was set me up for a mark. That's what Job thought. He set me up for a mark. But he didn't realize it was that, that he had to be in that place and he had to go through all that stuff because why? Job had a real bad case of I, me, mine, itis. I do this and I do that and blah, blah, blah. And I got... I wash my steps in butter, and when I come up, the princes cover their mouths, and the old men, they, and I'm this and I'm that. Well, we need to get ourselves out of the way and let him come forth. Yeah, we got to get over ourselves. Got Like I said, let's, got an eye problem, right? I, I, I. All right, Saudi. Not used for prefixes or suffixes. I'm on point, boy. Hey, I got it, brother. I'm on point, man. <laughs> she keeps me straight, brother. Keep me straight. All right, so that's the Tzadi. Any questions on Tzadi? Any questions on Tzadi? Hey, the easiest way to do it, what do you call that round dough? That round dough that has cheese and sauce and all that on there. What do you call that? No, I'm talking about the pie. You go to the Domino's or the, the pizza. Well, you know what I'm saying. I'm just using a name, okay? Well, I tell you, they're kicking my teeth in over here. All right, but that's a pizza. Sir, that thing, you do it do it that way if you have to. That's the easiest way for I found that's the easiest way. That's just how I've discovered it's the easiest way sometimes for some people. Just think about the two Z's in the word pizza. It's that t sound. Okay? T All right, so let's move to this next one. So here's our next letter. It is the letter Kuf. 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 One of my favorite letters. Kuf. But my second favorite letter. My first favorite is Yud. Always has been, always will be. I love that letter. My second favorite is Kuf. Just because I like the way it sounds. Kuf. <laughs> so, it is, in our language, we would use the phonetic sound of the letter Q with no U. So, it kind of sounds more like a K. Okay, that's the reason why I did it that way. All right? So if you see me write the word Sadiq, which you have before, how do I write it? T-Z-A-D-D-I-Q. Because it's phonetic. Sadiq. It ends with a kuf, yeah. So I use a Q sound there. But for all intents and purposes, it's going to sound like the letter K to us. A hard K. Hard K, yeah. All right? So, our last letter was number 90. So, what does that mean that this one is? Number 100, exactly. All right? So, the proto-synatic form, a line with a, a, a circle bisected by a horizontal line. Okay? 
in the paleo it's more like a like a, a and this is kind of stylized but it's more like a circular shape at the top with a line coming down and the reason sir yeah kind of yeah yeah um this particular font that i use i really like this font but the letter itself is a stylized a little bit it's really more like a a circle with a long line coming down through it. That's the way that they did it. But I mean, I'm not busting anybody's chops here. But it does kind of look like an umbrella. You're right. And then, of course, the Asher or the Assyrian or the book hand form. Now, this letter, even though it looks like it's a descender, it looks like it dangles down below the line. It does not. Okay? No, it is not a Sophie letter. Okay? Sadiq does not change its shape. You know, or yeah, sorry. I was thinking about the word again. Keep me straight. Keep me straight. So the kuf, it does not change its shape in the letter or, or in the word or at the end of it. It stays the same. Okay, so do we want to see what the script form looks like? I might as well just be showing you the I might as well just be showing you the uh the uh Osher script. Because the script form looks just like this. Looks like the letter P. What it looks like. All right. So the kuf, what does it symbolize? It symbolizes, if you see it in the other form that I was telling you where it's more round. So you've got this rounded part here with a straight line coming down. Okay. That's the form that I first learned it in. But I like this font. And it has nice thick lines, so that's why I use it. But what it's supposed to symbolize, and you can kind of see it, like a head with a neck coming down, or the spinal cord, all right? It symbolizes the back of the head, or seeing somebody from the back, okay? So does the back of the head. So when we talk about the back of the, what, what you guys say? I was just saying kind of how it looks like the back of a woman's head if she's got a ponytail. <laughs> well, I mean, hopefully everybody in this room has a spine that's attached to the, their head there. Okay, so it, it symbolizes the back of the head, but it also symbolizes the thoughts. And oh, little Willie pops in on this one too, the human will. Okay? Because in order to do something, you have to have the will to do it. Right? So it symbolizes the thoughts. I'm thinking, hey, I got a plan. All right? You and Isaac go and you got to hang some, you got to hang a unit. They don't want it on the ground. They want it above or maybe it's like a mini split or something like that. Okay? Well, you got to come up with a plan or an idea of how, to, where am I going to run these vents? What, that's all, that, all that, those thoughts and stuff, those are all tied to this. So on the top, again, on the positive side, talks about the will, talks about thoughts, thinking, right? intelligent thought, right? On the negative side, it speaks to us of confusion, unfulfilled needs, unfinished plans, lacking motivation. That's all tied up within the negative side of the letter kuf. And why do we talk about these things? Why do we talk about these? I don't know what you want to call them. Personalities? What do you want to go? Why do we talk about them? They're attached to these letters. And when, when we look at a word and we do our paleo part of our class, it does it does it not open up that word a whole lot when we look at these letters and the personalities or whatever you want to call them attached to them the meanings it really opens it up so we get a a deeper understanding of how that word came to be used or how it was how it was formed you know that's why i love doing this stuff man I, it's every every week honestly y'all and it's gonna sound corny but every week is like a, a buried treasure with you guys it's like a treasure map with you guys it really is because we get down in here and we start looking and we start digging and we follow trails and we go this way and we go that way and we're like, oh, what are you doing? And we come up, man, I'm talking about some of the stuff that we found. 
just even in our sentences that we take out of the Psalms. How many times have we found an erroneous translation from the King James? Numerous times. It's just like my brother brought up where it said instead of judges today, it said Elohim. Right? There's a lot of Elohim. But you have one, what I call capital E Elohim, and you have several little E Elohim. And that's the thing. The little E Elohim can be anything. It can be your car. It could be your job. It could be your kids. It could be anything that takes your eyes off of the capital E. But like I said, on the negative side, it's a piece of confusion, unfulfilled plans, um, things like that. One more thing that I did not write up here on the positive side, but it's very, very, it's very, very uh, important to know. I say it's important to know. To me, it is. I think it's kind of cool. The letter Kuf also speaks of holiness. Okay? I didn't write it down up here, but the idea of it is that, again, we're talking about the thoughts. We're talking about the will, right? We're talking about the desire to do something and to do it for a purpose, right? When I see the letter Kuf and I see it in that form, you don't want to know what I see, honestly, what pops into my mind every time I see it? And maybe this is why I like it so much. But every time I see it, I see the bonnet or the turban of the Kohen Hagadol, right? I see the turban of the high priest, and I see his back, his, you know, and I see him working on whether it's lighting the lamp or whether it's spooning the incense. Or what that's these little every time I see the letter Kuf, I get a picture of like the high priest doing something. And it's just a really cool to me, I think it's really cool. You know? Um, but that's how I see it. I always see it as the back of his head, right? With his turban and his little gold plate on there, right? <clears throat> Kadosh Le Yahweh, right? Holy to Yahweh. I see that. You know, but I'm like I said, I see it every time. It's just some goofy thing that pops into my head. But uh, I like that. But it does talk, like I said, it does talk about holiness as well. No sophie forms, no prefixes, no suffixes. Okay? All right, so let's move on to our last letter for the day. And which letter is that? It's going to be the letter Resh, right? Resh. All right, so makes it sound like our letter R, okay? And so our last letter, Kuf, was 100, so what's Resh? 200. Remember, I told you, <clears throat> 1 through 10, 10 through 100, 100 through 400. Some schools teach that the Sophit forms in order take care of 5, 6, 7, 8, 900. I'm not real sure whether, I'm, I'm just not real sure whether I'm good with that, me personally, because I've seen it both ways, you know, um, but like I said, we're just going to move with it from there. Um, so in the proto-Sinatic, remember this is the form that they used right after they came out of Egypt, right? All right, so we know, we know from our paleo studies that the resh is symbolic of what? The side of a man's head. So therefore, that's why you got this little picture of the side of a man's head. Then it went to this kind of a axe shape here, and then it, and then transformed, then it transformed into, into, this into this shape here. It looks, it looks a lot, lot like Dalit, except, except for it doesn't, doesn't have the little line sticking out the back. Remember, Dalit and resh are a couple of those look-alike letters as well. So resh, all right? The paleo form, I mean the paleo, the script form of resh is like a big yud. 
Real simple. So, on the top level, we said before that it speaks of the side of a person's head. So the idea, the pattern, right? Because we look at patterns a lot, don't we? So the pattern is when we take a look, let's take, you take a coin out of your pocket and take a look at it. You usually have a, a, a picture of somebody in profile on there, right? All right, and why is that? Because they're an important person for some for some reason, whatever it is, there's some sort of symbol. I don't know, but they're important enough to be put on. Well, kings and all that have been doing that since the dawn of time. And back in the day, back during these times, they would strike the coinage, right? And each coin was weighed out, flattened out, and then they would hand stamp that ruler's face into it or a some sort of a seal on that coin so that you would know. Right. They never really saw him in person, but they knew what he looked like, or at least had an idea, some sort of stylized idea of what he looked like off their coin. But here's the thing. Every time a new king came in, they would round up all the money, remelt it, restrike it with a different face. Now, if you brought him XYZ, they would give you back XYZ but it would have a different face there, right? But at the top, it talks about greatness, majesty, being majestic, being excellent, being lifted up, okay? Because these persons are held in high esteem, all right? Now, that word right there, it says chief, meaning a person in a position of rulership. It also says the first. The first. So, what is the Hebrew word for chief or head? No, Melech is a king. Rosh, which is where the word resh comes from. Rosh, the first or the top or the most important. Right? Like Yom Rishon, the first day. The chief day, the, the, the head of the week. Okay? The, R-O-S-H, yes, Rosh, that means the head. Okay? Rosh Chodesh, because it's the first day of the renewed moon. Right? The word Chadash, to renew. Right? Chodesh renewed, and Rosh, right? It's the first day of the renewed month or the renewed moon. That's why we blow trumpets on it and all that kind of stuff. That's what he said to do. <clears throat> but on the negative side, it speaks of the opposite of those things. It speaks of ignorance, and it speaks of ugliness and lack of progress and setbacks and... uh even to take it further, you know, um, uh, what's the word? Like a, a, a tyrant, despotism, these kinds of things. It speaks about those kinds of things. Bad rulership. Bad government. Right? <laughs> like I said, lack of progress. What's the opposite of progress? Congress. Just pro and con. <laughs> see what I did there? See that? Huh? Huh? You see what I did? <laughs> All right. So, like I said, that's the letter resh. Any questions on the letter resh? Any observations? Or we move on to the Nikud. All right. So let's move on. We're working on the O-type vowels today, right? And we have four different types. One of them is one that we never see, but it's there nonetheless. Yeah. The Nikud, N-I-K-U-D, that's the vowel points. Nikud, it means the vowel point. The pointings, Nikud. 
N-I-K-U-D, Nikud. All right, so the first one we have, we have the letter. Remember, I'm just using the Aleph as a placeholder, right? So we have a letter, and over the left-hand side, there's a dot. All right? So that is the, that is the vowel point. <clears throat> cholem. 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 So we know by the name, right? Cholem. It's a long duration, right? Cholem. All right? So we know that that is a long O sound. Oh. When I say long or short, uh, Brother Brady? Brady. When I say long or short, I'm talking about the duration of time that you hold the sound. Not like in English where we have a long O and a short O and a that changes the sound of it. This doesn't change the sound. It just changes how long you hold it. Okay? So, cholem. So, that's a ho, ho, ho. All right? So, let's take a look at a word here. So, we have a letter sheen. Or that, that should be a sheen. Pardon me. Should be a sheen. So, that dot should be over on this side. I told you, I did this uh, in 2010. Okay? So, give me a break. All right? So, we have a we We would... Let's, 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 okay, look, I'm fixing it right now. Look, look right here. Look, I fixed it. All right, there we go. Now we know it's a sheen, okay? And then it's, it's pointed with kamats, long duration, A-type vowel, sha. Then we have lamed, and it's pointed how? Cholem, and in this case, it's actually cholem wa, but we still have the cholem. And then what's this letter? Mem sofit. Remember to say sofit. Because it's at the end of a word. End of a word, brother. Okay? So, la, om, lom. So the word is shalom, right? Which we know means what? It means peace, but it can also mean protection and safety as well. Okay? So it can mean those all those things. We take it as peace, right? We take it as peace, but it can also mean protection and safety. Okay? So, shalom, here with loam. The accent is on where? The end of the word. 99% of Hebrew words all have their accent where? At the end of the word. So, shalom. Okay? So, let's move on to this next one. Now, this is the one that I was telling you that we never see. But you need to be, you need to be familiar with it anyway. So, what we have here is two dots. And the little T shape. So that is called katef kometz. Katef kometz. So the dot in this case is your katef and then kometz, right? So you remember I've always told you there's a kometz that Kim calls not kometz, right? That's the one that sounds like an O. That's what she calls it. It's easier for her. So, but, uh, but, but, kometz katuf is a short duration O-type vowel, even though it looks like an A. But this one, this Katev Kamut, uh, Katev Kamet, is only going to be under what? A guttural letter, because it's just like your other Katevs. Katev Nikud can only be under guttural letters, right? So, what are the five guttural letters? Aleph, Ayin, those are your weak gutturals. Hey, Chet, those are your harsh gutturals. And then the letter Resh. Okay, so those are your five guttural letters, right? So you could use this form under any of those. We don't ever see this one. Makes an O sound. Makes an O sound, a short O. Like, oh, oh, yeah, Ro, it would be short. No, 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 because the cough is not a guttural letter, okay? So, yes, it makes the same sound, but this form can only be under a guttural letter because of that little two dots, that schwa looking thing. It, but when, it, when it's joined with another nikud, it makes the katef mark, okay? So, it's, it's again, it's, it's, it's a short-sounding O that's only used under gutturals. So, if we have an Aleph and we have it under this Aleph, what sound do we have? 
Oh, and then we have a noon, and it's pointed how? Kirikyod. So what's the sound we have here? Oni. 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 Now it sounds like what you're thinking of, but it's not. All right? Oni versus Oni. I know, like I said, you, you got to look at this first letter. That's your difference. This word has an Aleph as an opening letter. The other has Ayin as an opening letter. Okay? So Oni in this form means a ship. Yeah. You could do it that way. So it means a ship or a boat or a ship. What's the difference between a ship and a boat? Size. Ship is much bigger than a boat is. Yeah, don't do that. You'll you'll make up some Navy people very upset. <laughs> I know they do, brother. But when it all comes down to it, the sh a ship is a larger craft than a boat is, technically. So that's Oni. But remember, I like where you were going with it. Because like I said, you're learning the sound, it's just that there's a different letter here. That's why the roots are, are important. They sound the same. They sound the same. It's context, sis. Remember, I'm always telling y'all, context, context, context. It's the context. So the word oni means a ship, okay? So what about now we have a whole M followed by the letter wa, like what we had over here. So whole M wa, that is a full vowel variant. That is a long form. All right? O. Oh. So we have Aleph, silent letter, Pointed cholem wa with a resh behind it. What's that word? Or. Or. Which means what? Light. Light. Right? <laughs> and then we have what my lovely wife lovingly calls not kometz, right? We have kometz katuf. Now, this is a short, this has a, this is a short O. And it has a special grammar rule. Kim's favorite grammar rule because it makes so much sense. What's the grammar rule? Two things to make that A sound like an O. What are they? This we know. This is true. I cannot fault you on that. Number one, it is in a closed syllable. So that means that the syllable will end with a consonant sound. Okay? So kol, right? Ends with a consonant sound. K-O-L. The L is a consonant. Therefore, it's a closed syllable. And it's also an accented. Okay? So a lot of times, a lot of times you when you see that, the the, the accent will be on the front of the word, on the end of, but it won't be in the same, if it's going to be used as O, it won't be in the same syllable as that. Okay? So it's the word, so like I said, that's kametz <clears throat> katuf. It's short, and there are special rules for it. And you do see it. Yeah. No. Well, it's always going to be one syllable, yes. But the word itself can be multisyllabic. Okay, but you're going to have one syllable. That's that's exactly right. That's because it's in a unaccented closed syllable. But you may have four syllables in that word. So it, it's that's the rules there for that. And we can get into words. You know, we can get into grammatic terms like declension and all that kind of. And I really don't want to do that today. <laughs> Kol means all. If it's spelled with a cough, it means all. If it's spelled with a koof, it means voice. Okay? So coal and coal. Both sound exactly the same. They just have a different letter at the front. This is what we were talking about with oni and oni. One means a ship, one's mean one means well, one means a ship or a boat, and the other means what? 
depression, affliction, right? So anyway, that's going to do it for our class today. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, hopefully you don't have any questions or maybe not too many. If you do, give me a holler.